Welcome! We're arguing about whether or not it's GIF or JIF. Um, I, in my correct opinion, it's GIF. <laughs> in my correct <laughs> opinion. Okay, yes, but when we argued about this years ago, okay. I looked it up on, I googled it, and the guy who started it preferred it to be JIF. Maybe he just likes the peanut butter, but do you know what GIF actually I stands get it, for? But I thought it was JIF too. Do you know what GIF stands for though? Graphic something. Graphics interface format. So I say graphics and not graphics. If you want to say graphics and be wrong, go ahead. But whatever, I could say whatever. I do call it GIF also, or GIF. What do I call it? I don't know what I call it. GIF is a peanut butter. Graphics have long necks and look like cheetah horses. <laughs> and graphics <laughs> are what are used and how they're pronounced. Thank you very you're being, much. You're being awfully He's funny. Made for, up his own language. Right? Yeah. So yes. Point but, me to a word that's not made up. Plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good callback. Uh, uh, to the beginning of our interview with Greg. Uh, I think he gets it now, in case you're wondering. Uh, but yeah, we're here actually not to argue about GIF or GIF, but we are here to talk about uh, our last little interview section with Greg. Uh, it was super fun to sit down and chat with him about this stuff. Uh, and so in this last bit, uh, we are going to be talking about docetism. Um, and for those of you who don't know, myself included before this, yeah, uh, docetism was a early heresy uh, that the early church fathers had to deal with. Uh, and it was pretty much a belief that Jesus was not fully man. Uh, and so docetism denies Jesus' humanity, uh, and that's a big problem, and Greg jumps into that. So, um, why don't we jump in with Greg? Can I, can I say one more thing? Yeah, please do. Because I keep, I keep talking all this big game about the first person, and I've just been, I, I don't know, maybe it's even like subconsciously avoiding it, but I'm just thinking about whoever might be still watching this, which, praise the Lord that you are, Woo, mercy. Um, what, do you do, what do you do when you see it in yourself? You know, I think part of walking with Jesus is the struggle. It is the wrestling. Um, we have to be really careful to, to assume that Christianity is, I put my trust in Jesus and now I'm great. And I have to, you know, I got God's love for me. You know, he changed my, he, he gave me a new nature. He's working in me now, the new nature of Christ through the power of the resurrection. But now I better maintain that. I better be good. And we talked about Gnosticism, but another ancient Christian heresy is this thing called Docetism. And the Docetists believed that Jesus didn't really actually take on a real body. That basically, there was this fleshly body that was born, and then when Jesus was 30 years old, and he was you know, perfectly capable and good looking or whatever, magically this divine spirit entered into Jesus. And for three years, he was like this you know, amalgamation of wretched human flesh body but also god's spirit and he could like do the work that god had given him to do and the early church fathers said absolutely not jesus took on a real body jesus struggled jesus cried jesus had emotions jesus wrestled jesus had body odor jesus used the bathroom jesus was a real human being from the moment of conception fully god and fully man and because he was fully man, what that means for me and for you and for you guys is that as we struggle with our human nature, as we do the Paul in Romans 7 thing, because life can be hard. And I don't know, I think about you guys. Maybe you've gone through, you know, maybe this COVID thing is just horrible. Or maybe you've experienced abuse or trauma or divorce or getting bullied by somebody online. Or maybe you look at yourself in the mirror and you're young and you're like, why don't I look the way that I want to look or you have an insecurity about this or that or you just feel broken about something and you don't even know why maybe that's something you relate to i know it's something i relate to that's the invitation of the real fully human jesus is let's wrestle with that together and i will help you and i will bring you from romans 7 always to romans 8 you know there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus mm. which are like the best words in the entire new testament because if it was up to just me and my nature, I mean, I just, yeah, I mean, there's some really special people in the world that are really powerful or really rich or geniuses, but I'm not any of those. Not that I'm not special. I just, I'm not the Ubermensch, man. I don't, 
have what it takes. If I went on like a mountain bike ride with you, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 seconds in, I'd be ready for a break, a picnic, a glass of water, probably something else, <laughs> you know, Good a steak, and whatever. Steak I just, you know, and so I think it's, it's a terror, or as Kierkegaard has said, it's just dread. It's dread to confront the weaknesses of our own nature, which is why we put all these band-aids on it. The world, I believe this. I mean, I really, I really, really believe this, that like the systems of the world, which are all about try harder, do better, be more, get your own righteousness, get your own power and pleasure. They, ne- they have no way to get you out of Romans 7. They can give you the craziest band-aid ever. And Jesus talks about this. He says, yeah, there's some people that are super rich, but guess what? You're going to die tonight. And everything you have is going to be taken from you. And that's why we say you never see a, you never see a rich person on their way to the funeral in their hearse with a U-Haul behind it. Because you don't get to take it with you. When you're gone, you're gone. That's it. It's done. And I really do think all those systems, to some extent, they may provide feelings and a sense of freedom for a time. I mean, that stuff works, man. You know, runner's high works. Retail therapy is great. Retail therapy works. Dopamine, serotonin, it all works. Other kinds of highs will work, but they're all band-aids. They all fade. They make big promises. This is just the nature of the devil to get back to C.S. Lewis, right? Satan makes big promises that he never intends to keep. But it feels good for a moment until you're so naked and so ashamed that you feel like there's no way out of it. And then he sneaks up on you in Romans 7 and says, you're condemned until you get to Romans 8 when we're told there's no condemnation. And so that's really the beautiful story of Jesus in our human nature is that God looked down after the fall, saw our need, saw our brokenness, and he didn't say, he didn't grab his crystal and push it away. He said, dude, I'm going to enter into that fully. I'm going to take on flesh so that I can show these people that their flesh isn't evil and their human nature isn't irredeemable. But I made them beautiful and I'm going to bring them back to beautiful, even if this life is full of, you know, struggles and suffering and challenges. And that's really good news to me because I'm 39. I'm a pastor. My hair is not quite as cool as Jonah's, but it's on the way. It's on the way. Santa Fe ponytail is coming. And, uh, you know, my wife likes it and that's all that matters right now. But man, I mean, my life is riddled with all kinds of questions and thoughts and struggles and doubts and fears and the heaviness of all this COVID thing. You know, it's, it's not like Christians are immune to that. We weren't supposed to be made immune. Our belief doesn't make us immune. Our belief makes us able to navigate those things with hope and, and to go out into the rubble of the world and say, yeah, everything's really bad right now, but I'm still going to plant a tree. I'm still going to grow this garden. I'm still going to bring life and beauty into the world because I'm not left in the ravages of Romans 7. And I get to enter into the eternal life of Romans 8. And, you know, one day, by the grace of God, every tear will be wiped from our eyes. All things will be made new. There will be a new heavens and a new earth. A glorious recreation will be in resurrection bodies. And I think that's the last thing to say is so many other views of the world just say that, you know, this is the one life you get. Be good enough. Oh, and by the way, when you're done, you're done. It's just extinguished, which really grates on me for a few different reasons. And the first is that we were created out of the love of God to love one another and love doesn't have an end to it. So that doesn't seem intuitive to, you know, that view of of human nature and death. But the second really pertains to justice. And justice, of course, is something that we care about a lot right now in the world and all the injustice that we see in the news. Well, from where I sit, there's a lot of people who have a lot of money and a lot of power and just seem to get away with it. You know, Epstein didn't kill himself, that we know. But however the dude did die, you just wonder like, what? Or, you know, Hitler, who takes his own life in his bunker. It's like, wait a minute. That's not right. That's not justice. That's not justice for all the wickedness and evil that, that those guys perpetrated. You know, or, or even worse are the guys that, you know, these despots around the world who commit horrible atrocities, but they don't, you know, they don't die at their own hand. I mean, they, they die in the lap of luxury on the backs of slaves. And so my deepest sense and notions of justice for the brokenness of human nature and eternity for the goodness and the love of human nature 
point me to this idea that, you know, that this is not the end. This is going somewhere. And so that means you can wake up in the morning on the hard days. On the hardest days when your nature is breaking you down and you're wrestling with God because um, you know where you came from. You know what God has done to deal with the brokenness of your nature right now and you know where you're going. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Sure, man. Sorry, I talk a lot too no, much. No, we wanted, no, we did not. That was really... I talk too much. I, I was aware of that and we still asked you here so you can keep that in mind. Well, and I'll just reiterate what you guys said at the end of the last episode. Um, or when I came into the room that, yeah, if you have any questions about this stuff, you know, Jennifer, Jonah, me, hit us up, email, phone, hang out, grab coffee. Um, again, the beauty of the gospel of Jesus is we actually get to ask these questions. We don't have to be afraid. They're like, mm-hmm. is God going to be mad at me if I have questions? Is my pastor going to, you know, be upset if I'm struggling or doubting? It's the opposite, you know? The worst thing is for someone to struggle with their own stuff, never tell anyone, come to their own conclusions outside of community, and then just peace. It's not healthy. We weren't made to live that way. So, and I think it's a, another like gentle reminder that like, hey, sure we're from a distance and we're on a video camera right now, but we are also people, and we do also have thoughts and feelings and can talk and think and yep. emote and be with people in this, and so. Like, we're not making this to be movie stars. We're making this to, like, invite dialogue in a relationship with people. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on here and sharing everything. Thanks for having me. Let's do it again. Love you guys. Hit us up. Peace out. See you next time. Adios. Yes. Um, Well, my mind's, like, blown. Um, Maybe we can insert a gif of my mind being blown. Or a gif. Or a gif. Nah, a gif. Fine. Comment below and let us know, is it GIF or GIF? I am firmly in the GIF camp, as you can hopefully see. Yeah, you know, this is just really important. All of this, this whole series of can human nature solve the world's problems? And, and it's just so relevant for where, what does Greg call it, our cultural moment? Mm-hmm. That just over and over again, we're trying to fix things. And so we, this has been a really helpful discussion that if we do anything apart from God, mm-hmm. we can't. We, we, and even things done in the name of Christ throughout history have made huge mistakes. So just doing something on your own and tacking God's name on it is not what we're talking about. Yeah. So, and I think a, a, a takeaway for me is um, definitely as we... As we uh, see us struggling with the same problems over and over again we can see like dang maybe uh we as humans need to change or get better at this um and it becomes a question of how do we change Uh, and it can definitely be a oh i'm gonna just be better um but i think we have the choice to kind of lay that down and say christ would you make me better right Mm -hmm. um so that that's been a takeaway for me i hope you guys have had some useful takeaways from this um it's been it's been a joy and it was fun to sit down and chat with greg and we hope to do it again thank you greg yes so thanks gregory uh we'll catch you guys later bye